So, I decided to find out how big the universe actually is, and how small we humans really are. And it all starts with you. This is the height of the average person, 177 centimeters or 5 foot 10. This is the height of the Burj Khalifa, 830 meters or 469 people stacked head to toe. Haha, <laughs> 69. Earth's diameter is 12,742 kilometers wide, which means it would take 15,352 Burj Khalifas or 7.2 million people stacked on top of each other to cover the same distance. If that doesn't already make you feel small, <laughs> well, I guess that's not much you ever see, right? And I can only assume you're related to this guy, or this guy, or this guy. But don't worry, we're just getting started. If we zoom out, the distance to the next closest object to Earth, our moon, is 384,400 kilometers away, and represents the furthest that any man has ever traveled into space. A truly amazing feat of human ingenuity of that era. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Unless you think they faked it which is still kind of amazing. But I digress. To further put the magnitude of this distance into perspective, that means you could fit 30 Earths between us and the moon. This is what Earth looks like from the moon. This is what Earth looks like from Mars. And this is what Earth looks like from 6 billion kilometers away. 6 billion. That's 1,561 times further than the Earth is from the moon. You are here, somewhere on this tiny pale blue dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering. Thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines. Every hunter and forager every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. The Earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Whoa, that was really deep. Anyway, this is our solar system. It measures about 9 billion kilometers in diameter and consists of the Sun, 8 planets, 146 moons, and a bunch of other space stuff. Okay, maybe not the aliens. Maybe. We are somewhere here, inside this 9 billion kilometre wide solar system. By now, you're probably thinking, Wow. We really are tiny. But this is still only the beginning. This is our local interstellar cloud, also known as the local fluff, and is the region where our solar system is currently located. It is so big, we're going to have to start measuring distance in light years. So what is a light year? It's the distance that light travels in one year, which is approximately 9.4 trillion kilometers. That's this many zeros. What? Yeah. Now multiply that by 30, and you have the diameter of the local fluff, approximately 30 light years, or 31,333 solar systems side by side. That means if you stood on one end and could somehow see the other end, it would take 30 years for the light from the image to reach your eyes. This would mean the fluff you're seeing is an image from 30 years ago, and basically means you're looking 30 years into the past. Do you even know what I'm talking about anymore? He doesn't know. Never mind. All you need to know is that this giant interstellar cloud is nothing. When we zoom out and compare it to our galaxy, the Milky Way, which spans an astounding 105,000 light years from end to end. There are over 100 billion planets and over 100 billion stars inside our Milky Way galaxy. And somewhere amongst all of it is a microscopic speck that represents Earth. But even this pales in comparison to when we further zoom out to our group of galaxies we call the Local Galactic Group, which consists of approximately 50 galaxies including our own Milky Way, and spans about 10 million light years from end to end. That basically means for us to travel from one end to the other, we need to be moving at the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second. And we need to be doing this for 10 million years. That does not sound like a trip anyone is making. Ever. 
Yet this is still nothing when compared to the Virgo supercluster, which contains at least 100 galaxy groups and clusters and is an unbelievable 110 million light years in diameter. I don't believe it. Believe it, kid. Because even the behemoth that is the Virgo supercluster is but a mere drop in the ocean of galaxies that makes up the Lanaikea supercluster which consists of over 100,000 galaxies stretched across a mind-blowing 520 million light years. 520 million light years. That basically means for us to travel from one end to the other, we need to be moving at the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second, and we need to be doing this for 520 million years. I'll give you a moment to let that sink in. 520 million years, bro. I can't go back, can I? No. Raise your hand if you think you're beginning to understand the magnitude of the universe. Nope. Because everything, 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 is seemingly irrelevant when compared to the full greatness of the entire observable universe. It contains several hundred billion galaxies and spans at least 93 billion light years end to end, engulfing even the great Lanaiokea supercluster amongst the seemingly infinite expanse we call space. I never end. And this doesn't even include the 33% of the observable universe whose light is still on the way to our eyes. Nor does it include the unobservable universe, the parts of the universe that are so far we'll never see them, which is believed to be at least 23 trillion light years end to end. Again, that's this many zeros. Does anyone still think we're alone in this universe? Is there no one else? So, if you and I are but a tiny dot on this earth, which is but a tiny dot in this galaxy, which is an even tinier dot within the universe, then anything we have done, or will do, Immortality! Take it! It's yours! will eventually amount to nothing in the vast and unfathomable scale of the universe. So, let me tell you why you're here. The next time you're feeling stressed, or ah! angry, or upset, just remember, eventually, none of it will matter. In a hundred years, you'll be dead. In a thousand years, no one will remember your name. And in a million years, no one will even know you existed. Mother. So, with whatever short and insignificant time you have left, on this wet blue rock, in this infinite universe, you might as well do whatever truly makes you happy. Say that again. You might as well do whatever truly makes you happy.